This way we learn in school has been largely dominated by the achievements of white men, while the amazing accomplishments of women are often overlooked. Just as Harriet Tubman devoted her life to freeing slaves, many women throughout history have been the driving force behind change. Our program today features songs and stories by these incredible women. When I was a kid, I just knew I was going to be the first black female doctress of medicine there ever was in the 18th century. <laughs> I told everyone I was going to be a triple threat. Rebecca Lee Crumpler, American physician, nurse, and author. You know, there isn't a lot of information about me that you can search for. Everything people know about me is from my introduction in my book. I guess you can say I was hidden and there weren't many records made during my time. So here's a bit about me. It was my aunt who inspired me. While she raised me, she cared for sick townspeople. I wanted to be just like her. Oh, to be a doctor. Luckily, my childhood integrity allowed for those dreams to come true. I always was a person to not take no for an answer. I wanted to help mothers and children. I became a nurse in the 1850s because my first husband's son died at seven years old. Then I applied to New England Female Medical College in 1860. I received a Wade scholarship. My goal was to become a household name so I could help people. I even wrote a book in 1883. Here's how it starts. <clears throat> to mothers, nurses, and all who may desire to reduce the pain of the human race, this book is offered. Introduction. I now present a few thoughts in book form trusting that they will be accepted. The following pages are addressed to mothers, nurses, and women. I challenged the prejudice that prevented African-American females from pursuing medicine and cared for freed slaves who didn't have access to medical care with the Freedmen's Bureau. Even when I experienced severe racism by physicians and administrators in the South after the Civil War, I worked under Dr. Orlando Brown in the agency. And 
Even though I experienced some horrible things, I would do everything all over again. So African Americans and females had a choice to be educated and involved in medicine. After the Emancipation Proclamation, Nina Simone's I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel to Be Free spoke of the hurt and frustration born of inequality. Her outspokenness was detrimental to her career, but she could not remain silent. Today, women continue to speak out as agents of change. Thank you. 
The home security system, a tool that has become an addition to many households, apartment complexes, and department stores. The entire reason I created the system was because I had this constant feeling of being paranoid. I mean, me and my husband both work irregular hours. The normal response is to feel a little scared coming home late in the morning in a high crime neighborhood. Being a nurse, I've already seen so much at the hospital. When a person comes home, they're going to their safe haven. Where can you go if you're not feeling safe in your own home? When an emergency happens, you're supposed to call the police, right? What do you do when 30 minutes have passed? The police haven't arrived. You have to take care of it on your own. The police response in my neighborhood was always slow. My part of town was always taken with a grain of salt. Nothing was ever taken seriously until a turn for the worse. If then. If those who are supposed to ensure the safety of people can't protect me, I'll protect myself. Imagine a system where you can see who is outside your home from the safe they've inside it. Different height peepholes for whoever is there, sliding cameras so you can see different angles, TV monitor, and even two-way speakers. God, I sound like an advertiser. <laughs> I applied for a pen with the name Home Security System Utilizing Television Surveillance. You can place the monitors in any part of the house and press a button to rate whoever was on the other side of the door. But even then, there was always the possibility of danger. So there was also a button that contact security or the police. I loved it and had so much hope for it. So we applied for the patent in 1966. Although it took a while, we finally got approved in 1969. We had to share something with our neighbors. Who keeps the certain things to themselves? I mean, I even won an award from the National Science Committee. But the overs of it have gone underprotected for far too long. I'm glad I can do something about that.
1960s, there was a spirit of change in the air. This was no calm, gentle breeze, but a persistent, powerful wind. Throughout the turmoil of Vietnam and the Civil Rights Movement, women influenced policy and became advocates for social justice. nominated for U.S. President and the first black woman elected for Congress. I continued to care about our society even when I didn't win the presidential race. Eventually, I retired from Congress, taught college students, and co-founded the National Political Congress of Black Women. I wanted to be remembered as a woman who dared to be a catalyst of change. Good afternoon, students. While nothing is easy for black people in America, neither is anything impossible. We must not be docile, resigned, or bitter. We cannot sit in our homes waiting for someone to do things for us. The United States can no longer afford racial discrimination. Freedom is an endless horizon. 1970 was a time for change. Women deserve to have their degrees speak for themselves. That's why I introduced the proposal that although it wasn't new, was finally time to actively enforce it. It needed to be said. When a young woman graduates college, the first question she will be asked is, do you type? There 
has a calculated system of prejudice behind that question. It is for this reason that I want you to introduce a proposal that must become a part of the basic law of the land, because I am for the Equal Rights Amendment. I believe that America and its people deserve better in 1972, so I gave my presidential announcement speech. I stand before you today as Shirley Chisholm, a presidential candidate for the United States of America. I am not a candidate for Black America or the women's movement. I am a candidate for the people. I have faith in the American people. I believe that we can correct our mistakes. My presence symbolizes a new era in American political history. We black and white will clean up our streets, our water, and our air. Join me in an effort to reshape our society and regain control of our destiny as we go down the Chisholm Trail of 1972. My work in politics led to opportunities for Barack Obama and Kamala Harris. And my ambition? My ambition led to racial and gender equality on a national platform. Shaka Khan told us something good. Sister Rosetta Tharp paved the way. The singer and blues guitarist from Kine Plant, Arkansas was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018. Her success opened the door for later generations of female superstars. It's so exciting to talk to someone about this. We can all say the feeling is electric. I am from Kine Plant, Arkansas, one of two con pickers. But that was just a great job. My mom played the mandolin in church while my father was a singer. My mother encouraged me to use the voice that God gave me. And I did. At four years old, I was cited as a musical prodigy. 
playing my guitar and singing in the church. And at six years old, I was traveling with my mother in an evangelical troop. People always ask me if I was scared, if I knew what I was doing. There's definitely a feeling of pressure and anxiety that I still feel now. Some would assume that I'm scared about going on stage, or worried that my style of music was too different, that I'd be ostracized from the church. You can't fear what's already happened to you. Whenever I was working on my music, it felt like I was perfecting my craft. There wasn't a moment I wasn't confident in something I created. Whenever I created something, I took pride in it. I wasn't going to be shaken on something I was proud of. It was never stage right that got me down. It was the way my people perceived me. Even in my own community, a black woman, singing and playing the guitar and doing it well was newer than sliced bread. Especially growing up myself, there was always a lurking thought that someone would do anything, and I mean anything, not to see me succeed. The lady day knows my story all too well. Marie and I became a partner in crime, and my confidant. I took a chance, and we made memorable music together. Up above was one of my favorites. They'll tell you about my film marriages, but that, that was something I wanted to keep as mine. Anyways, the songs, Rock Me, That's All, The Most Rock, these all became hits overnight. I made gospel music a mainstream genre. They hated it. I thought blending blues, jazz, and my own sound was going to be something incredible. And it was. Inspiring legends like Elvis, Johnny Cass, Chuck Berry. They're just playing sped up rhythm and blues. I've been doing that forever.
achievements. We have a female vice president of the United States, and she's a woman of color. Women are doctors, engineers, scientists, athletes, entertainers, educators, and policy makers. We owe a debt of gratitude to those women who opened doors. While we celebrate, we acknowledge the work that remains to be done. Domestic violence and violence in communities, economic disparities, social justice, and climate change are just a few of the challenges we face. Women must continue to persist and lead the way to a better world for, for all, all of us. us. 